What I find juice is that the words are important to you and being able to understand the words are important to you. In this video, watches the OG Jacob reacts to Juice World's new album, Death Race for Love. Demons? That's anyone. Right, I'm going with Demons, featuring Brent Fayaz. Well, I like this one a lot. I love all the little production things in the background. And the finger snaps, they're very beautiful. For a long time, what would be called urban music pitched its star on the old school. And the old school ruled for a very long time. You had Wu-Tang and all of this. And now, I don't think the old school is that much of an influence anymore. I think this music sounds like it's, you know, they're going back to the 50s and the 60s to find a kind of cool vibe, a chill vibe, which wasn't in hip hop. There was no chill hip hop music really. But I don't even think you can use the word hip hop anymore. What the hell does that mean? I mean, they were hip hoppers in the 80s. So what do you call it now? I think we gotta stop with these labels. I, I mean, it's pop music. It's very evocative of a, of, of a night on a rooftop, smoking a blunt, having some Corvassier out of a snifter. So Ring Ring featuring Clever. It's got that big drop bass, which I always like that big drop bass. I'm feeling a little, uh, a little blur thing, like gorillas. Again, it's like the future of music. It's like, this is not rock and roll. It really isn't rock and roll. It might have a, a feeling of it, but it's not rock and roll. It's not really R&B. It's like a new genre is being created right in front of our eyes. And I don't even know what you call it. I remember hearing music like this, and a gentleman was playing it. And I asked him, you know, what is that? And he couldn't tell me. He said, it's a pop music. I said, well, if you have a playlist, what kind of music is being played with it? It's symphonic. I find that using the elements of what would be a string section. And I usually hate auto-tune. I really, most of the time, I can't stand it. But this is used very nicely. Plus, I'm hearing Jamaican dance hall, especially in the vocals. Again, sounds like hit record to me. Juice World, Chicago. I don't know who you are. I know you're 19 years old, and I think you should be very proud at 19 years old that this is what you're doing. Is there a producer on this? Is he the producer? Is he playing the instrument? How is this working? So he has somebody making the beats for him. I like the what's really, I like that delivery. Again, it has a, a bit of that grimy England thing also. All right, that was that one, and I was, uh, I was very impressed. So now, gentlemen, we're going to Who Shot Cupid? Again, we switch it up. We got a little acoustic guitar intro. Death Race for Love. Is that the name of the album? I like that album, that title a lot. All right, gentlemen, I'm gonna, I, I, I like this, Who Shot Cupid, but I'm seeing this, oh God, featuring Young Thug, and I wanna hear this, because I know Young Thug. And also, the subject matter of this music. This music isn't about braggadocio, or I got big rings, or I'm cool, or I'm, well, now we're talking about ass, but you, <laughs> I think usually this music is really about feelings, and it's about what's going on in their lives as opposed to what's hanging from their fingers or their, or their, the chain around their neck. Now this one, this one sounds like more commercial. It certainly has that Jamaican pop, pop, pop. I, I don't know what you call it now, but there's this new, new kind of music coming out of Jamaica. And does it have a name? It's the beep beep. And then it has that 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 Afro style. I, I, I don't know what, what the genre is. I can't put it, but maybe we shouldn't put a name on it. It's all just music, ladies and gentlemen. All just music, and that's all we really care about. It doesn't matter who's making it. But I like this one with Young Thug. I, I like Young Thug, so I, I automatically like the sound. Um, again, more dance hall. That's, that's the stuff, that's more in the club music. What I, what I do like is mixing up the the boudoir and the club. Next, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to empty. Oh, well, now I've got these jazzy piano, which is bringing me home. After a long night of dancing and drinking, maybe a good snack. Oh, I think all of this has to do with Drake. I think Drake has changed the musical landscape beyond people's ability to even understand. Remember, Drake is the number one streaming artist in the world. Forget about Michael Jackson. Drake has streamed billions of times, and his influence is here. Drake makes these records that sound like demos. They don't sound like a full production. 
And I think that artists like Juice World are taking that bare bones Drake feel and adding to it and making Drake songs that are even more Drake than Drake songs. And don't get me wrong, you know, Drake is the second coming, our, our young man from Toronto. Drake might be the next Michael Jackson in, in his influence. You know, every piece of music in the world today goes back to Michael Jackson, goes back to that Motown 20th anniversary when the Jackson brothers came out and they did their greatest hits. But those were songs that children sang. And then the Jacksons left the stage and Michael stood there at the stage and said, I like the old songs, but I want to play something new. And then he played Beat It, and that changed the world. And everybody from Drake to Bruno Mars to everybody, they're all Michael Jackson. But again, that was then, this is now. Is it possible that a man of Drake's age, who's put out so much music, could have that kind of influence in popular culture now? where other, other artists are now emulating him. It's a very interesting time for music. I think it's the best time for music. And again, it's black music that rules the world. You know? And it always has been, ladies and gentlemen. Remember that, black music always around the world, from jazz to pop to hip hop to R&B, it was always black music. So I like this a lot. Again, it's a slow jam that I'm having with my girl after a long day, maybe we got a hot tub in the hotel room. <laughs> and that's a slow jam to make love by. All right, we're moving for Won't Let Go. Oh, it's... I like that. Well, I can hear this one already, I like. Because it has a little sequence in the back. I like the background vocals. It's a very important thing to be able to do background vocals. Again, sounds like, sounds English to me. It's like an anthem. This is a throwing my hands in the air. This is hopping up and down while the floor is kind of bending because you got 20,000 people all bouncing at the same time. I could see him strutting out across the stage, pointing over here where people go, ooh, pointing over there, go, ah. Who's the producer? This particular song is Morgoth Beats and Perfs. Man, you know, we got, it used to be producers had the name. Nowadays, there's so many people making beats that the integration of production and artist is never more, I don't know what to call it. Well, the producers have become the artists, the artists become the producers. It used to be there was a guy pulling the knobs, but now the symbiosis between beat makers and songwriters, it's a very exciting time to be alive. I wish I was your age, 19 years old. I was your age in 1977 when punk rock and all that began. And I remember going to the Bronx and seeing Grandmaster Flash holding his tribal meetings and they were powering it through the light poles. And that was the beginning of a whole new world. I remember seeing the Furious Five and the Furious Five were like nothing the world had ever seen before. And nobody knew who they were. Nobody knew who they were. Melly Mel up there on stage. 40 years later, gentlemen, and ladies, of course, we're in a new world, and uh, man, it gets better and better and better. And as this young artist is telling you, I'm here, I'm loud, and I'm proud, so. Chick, it's a chick sound, chick, chick, chick. And, and that, if you were standing listening to it, you'd just be kind of swaying a little back and forth. And, and these sparse, modest productions make you lean in to listen to what he's saying. The production doesn't get in the way. So again, what I find juice is that the words are important to you. And being able to understand the words are important to you. And the lyrics are important to you. A lot of music, the lyrics are secondary. Many times the lyrics are silly, superfluous, offensive, giddy, silly. I think you're trying to say something. It's hard to say a lot because you haven't lived that long. And a lot of times you have to kind of it's more about what you feel than what you know. And I think as you get, he just said it. I'm, I'm 19 years old, blah, blah, and I, I'm still sad as a, I don't want nobody to think that I'm an asshole. My mama told me, told me better that I'll be honest. I mean, I love these lyrics. I like, I like the self-deprecating. I like people who can talk about what they feel are their shortcomings. And I like that he doesn't want people to think that he's an asshole. That is a great line. And that says a lot about you, Juice. Nobody wants to be perceived as an asshole. So thank you for that. Thank you for making me think.
And that's what music should do. It should make you dance. It should be a large proportion of music that wants to make you think. Because I know that when I want to weep, there's a few songs I can put on and they're going to make me weep. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you just need to cry. Again, I want to meet you one day, Juice World, because I bet you you're nothing like I think you are. Time really moves fast, fast, fast. It really does. Anyway, Juice World, you're my man. One day, you and I will be in Wrigley Field and you'll be saying, what the hell am I doing here with this old man? And then we'll have a good drink. So now that you heard like you, most of the album. I did. What do you think about it, man? Well, I think that he's on his way. Now, let me tell you this, Juice World. Sameness can be a problem. So, I've always found, you know, the, the Beatles never wrote two songs, basically, that ever sounded the same. So, sameness can be a good thing. Because look what it's done for a guy like, like Drake. Drake, yes, the moment you hear a Drake song, you can tell. I like what you're doing. Um, I think if every song were completely, completely opposite, we wouldn't know who you are. I think you're on your way. I think the weekend spent like what, how many, uh, what, X amount of years, and down here in Los Angeles, recording his songs by himself, right? And they became the weekend tapes, and that's what blew him up. So I think exactly what you're doing is what the weekend did. He's creating quality music, and I think at 19 years old, think about the music you've been making at 25 and at 30. So I'm very impressed. I like what you're doing. I want to know more about the producers. I don't know who's creating these tracks, but it, it sounds seamless. It sounds like a single artist. It doesn't sound like a bunch of people working together. Here's my tracks, so let me build a song around it. They sound indigenous to me. And so, and that's a good thing. Uh, I don't know where one starts and the other begins, or, or, or the other ends, and I like that. Which means that it's you, Juice World, that's coming through the music. It doesn't really matter who the, produ who the producers are or what the production is. It's you that kind of floats over the top, and I don't want anybody thinking I'm an asshole. Again, that line's gonna stick in my head. That's what, a mu that's what music is here to do, stick, stick things in your head. And, and so, uh, I'm very impressed. What would you tell somebody who's never heard any Juice World music why they should check them out? Because it will stir your soul, right? It will stir your soul. Remember, music is ineffable. Music, talking about music is like painting about architecture. It, it's, there is no language to describe something as ineffable and personal as music is. Music has no language. Music is a language. Music was the first language. Before we were talking, we were singing, I'm thinking. I'd say, feel it. It's all about feeling, isn't it? And this gentleman, Juice World, and his prob name is probably like Rodney Derek Anderson. It's gonna be one of those guys, you know? <laughs> and, and he's like, you know, he's, he, he's in his second semester at community college. This persona works for me. I don't know who you are, but, but the persona is languid and learned and vulnerable. I'm not hearing big party anthems. I'm hearing stories from the inside of a young man's brain. His perception of the world as he sees it now. In the 21st century, remember, man, we're living in this crazy time. Man. I think we need more people like Juice World. We need people to make us feel because we're not feeling enough, ladies and gentlemen. We're just not feeling enough. We're reacting. We're we're proacting. You know, we're we live in, in in a world of political instability and intolerance, and all this shit is rising again. And I can't fucking believe that it's all rising again but the only way that you you fight that is you rise against it you know they build a wall we tear it down we don't build a bigger wall we tear it down oh or at least we punch a hole through it just well punch a hole through the wall man i'm ready to i'm ready punch a hole through the wall people like you change the world we don't change the world we had our time we had our but guess what we failed you get to change the world and the world you're moving into, man, of global heating and all this shit and wars. And, I mean, I can't even... So please, Juice, change the world for us. One heart and one mind at a time. One beat at a time. <laughs> How are you? What's up? Do me a... Do this homeboy a favor. Subscribe to Is My Shit Tight. Okay?